Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to share my experience after driving our 2024 Genesis GV70 for 15,000 miles in 10 months of ownership. Have our feelings about this vehicle changed after this many miles? They have, and in this video, I will tell you in which ways. Unfortunately, it's not all good impressions, but please understand that this is my subjective opinion based on my experience. Yours may be better or even worse. And let me be clear that we haven't had any breakdowns or unscheduled visits to the dealership, but that doesn't mean that this car has been void of issues that have changed my initial overall positive impressions about this vehicle and have made me reconsider keeping this car long-term. Here we go. First off, let me explain what this GV70 is to us because it is actually my wife's daily driver and I drive it like every couple of weeks on those long trips, but it's me that chose the car. So I wanna tell you why I chose this vehicle. I had been following the Genesis brand for a few years. I've always liked the G70 and the G80. The GV70 is one of the two original SUVs that Genesis sells in the United States. Since the GV70 was introduced here, other models and variants have followed, but at the beginning, there was only the GV70 and the bigger sibling, the GV80. The GV70 competed for money with other SUVs, and I felt that we took a gamble in going with it because we were very close to sticking with the proven Lexus brand in the flesh of the RX 350, and I chose it over, at the time, all new GLC 300 from Mercedes because after having other German cars, I just wanted something more reliable and less prone to issues and I figured we could give the Genesis brand a chance. I had heard good and bad things about the Genesis brand. Some of the good things that I heard were that it was highly innovative. I mean, the Genesis brand along with Kia and Hyundai have been able to introduce vehicles that people want to drive in the US. When Genesis became a brand here, the market was barely starting to shift towards anything SUVs, but Genesis was able to recompose and create two SUVs that received mostly positive feedback from experts and most importantly from consumers. In 2016, its first year, Genesis sold 7,000 cars in the United States, and last year, 2023, it sold almost 10 times as many. Value. Genesis models usually sell for less than their competitors. The brand is able to pack desirable features in their models that some competitors typically don't offer in their base models. Genesis offers generous warranties, 10 years or 100,000 miles for the powertrain, five years or 60,000 miles bumper to bumper coverage, and complimentary schedule maintenance for the first three years or 36,000 miles. And personally, all these factors played a major role in our decision to acquire the 2024 Genesis GV70 along with the looks because these looks just don't get old. I still think that this is a beautiful SUV inside and out. And as a reminder, ours is the Sport Prestige package with the four cylinder turbo. Honestly, we are enamored with the looks of this car. It is a head turner. This design language is consistent with the rest of the lineup, but I firmly believe that it lands best in the dimensions of the GV70. I'll say that in general, relatives and friends either don't know what Genesis is as a brand or have never seen an SUV from Genesis up close or they just never paid attention to anything related to Genesis. And inside is just as impressive. People are very pleased with the exterior, but I noticed that they always compliment the interior for how rich it looks and feels. This interior is luxurious and packed with tech. The seats may not be the most comfortable I ever sat on for how firm they are, but they're highly configurable, so I hope that some of you are able to find your perfect position. They're also heated and ventilated, but I do find them punishing for long drives. And the infotainment system, it's got everything you need. I mean, navigation, a killer sound system with 16 speakers, but although it sounds very good, I have experienced sound systems from other brands that happened to be better, at least in my experience, particularly the one from BMW. Um, I forgot what the name of the premium sound from BMW is, and the stock system and the Tesla Model Y that I had was better than this one. The GV70 has all the connectivity options you could want, and I'm happy to inform you that Genesis finally has updated the software to accommodate wireless Apple CarPlay, which is a little thing that makes a big difference. You're able to adjust most features in three ways with the touchscreen and an array of manual controls and the main dial in the center console. And there's a fourth way, which is with voice commands, but it's not as precise as the other three. So I hardly ever resource to the fourth one. But the Genesis brand also has some negatives, which I knew about that just didn't dissuade me from purchasing this car at the time. I'll say that the biggest issue with the Genesis brand is resale value. 
premium vehicles depreciate badly the minute you're driving them off the lot and Genesis usually tend to depreciate more than let's say Lexus. And this brings me back to the value proposition. I mean, Genesis vehicles are cheaper to buy, but in time that advantage may dissolve in depreciation. Reliability. Can we all agree that there's nothing in the premium segment as reliable as a Lexus? But I'll say that life would be pretty boring if we all drove Lexuses, right? Genesis as a brand is not perceived to be as reliable as a Lexus, but I was certainly hoping that it was better than let's say BMW and Audi, and I'm not sure that that has been my personal experience. Reddit and forums have their fair share of negative experiences, but it is my belief that inherently, we are more prone to voice our negative experiences than our positive ones. Issues with screens failing, and even some of your comments here mention first-hand experiences with failing axles, check engine light, and things like poor fuel economy. In my experience, highway miles per gallon is very close to what is posted for at 26 miles per gallon. And to be honest with you, sometimes I'm able to beat that, but for the most part, I will say it's consistent with what, with what is listed for. But it is in the city that it struggles to achieve the 19 miles per gallon, which is claimed by Genesis. In pure city driving, we get about 16 miles per gallon. And sometimes when my wife goes, let's say like a whole month driving just in the city, we get a lot less, maybe under 15. Then comes the dealership experience. Premium brands often focus on elevating the dealership experience, which is a key component of the total ownership of a vehicle. The Genesis dealership experience usually ranks lower than others. A study published by Kelly Blue Book in 2022 ranked Genesis below luxury segment average. My personal purchasing experience was very good. No haggling, no dealership installed options, nothing. I would say among the best. But I can see how this can vary depending on where you live because in certain areas, Genesis are sold at Kia and Hyundai stores with everything that comes with it. My local store is a dedicated Genesis establishment that looks brand new, and I found the interaction to be similar to other premium car dealerships. Now, let's talk about the particular issues that we've had with our GV70. In the summer, we drove throughout the southwestern region of the United States, and keep in mind that some of these temperatures are among the highest in the western world. I really It was extremely hot at about 115 degrees in some areas and at some point in the middle of nowhere the AC stopped blowing cold air. From one second to the next the AC stopped blowing the coldest air it had. So I was making use of the cool seats and they don't seem to be cooling that much right now. It looks like an issue with a relay or something because it was just like a like from one second, from one nanosecond to the next, and it stopped being cold. And right now I have it a full blast on low, but it's, uh, it's barely coming back. I'll keep it posted. I hope this fixes itself because I'm gonna be in some of the hottest areas of the United States for the next few days, and it will suck that I have it without AC. It went on for about 10 minutes, and I was worried because it was right at the beginning of our trip and we had over a thousand miles to go and I just wouldn't know what to do if he had stopped working altogether. Luckily, it didn't happen again and I haven't had any issues in that regard. A second issue that I've had with this vehicle is the check engine light coming on. This started happening about a month ago and the first time it lasted about a couple of days and it went away on its own, but now it's back. Just when I was about to schedule a visit, it turned off itself and I just didn't pursue the booking for service but it's on again and it's been on for the last two weeks. I contacted the dealership and I was shocked to find out that they didn't have any openings for the next two months. They also told me that it was in a problem and that I could keep driving the vehicle without risk of engine failure. So it's on them. A third one, and I don't know if I should call it an issue and I'll, I'll try to make sure that I record it with the phone, see if you can hear it. It's a loud power steering assist. It's not that loud like normally you will find in the old school hydraulic ones, but I, I perceived this sound that my wife never picked up, but I did. And I'm, I'm gonna make sure to write it up next time I take it in for service. And there's been times that I hear like a subtle alert sound off and I don't know what it is, but it's done it a couple of times. It's usually when I'm out on the road on my road trips and it just hasn't done it again. But please understand that some of these issues are sporadic and the dealership can only address these 
when they can recreate the problem at the time of their inspection. So at this point, the only issue that they will be able to fix is the check engine light on. And I wonder if a simple reset will solve the problem or I'm gonna see it again, which is gonna be annoying. All this brings me to the point where I don't know if I wanna keep this car past initial comprehensive warranty. When I bought it, I was really hoping that I could keep it for a long time, if not forever. And I say that in quotations, just, you know, just a long time past this initial warranty. But these minor issues are annoying at most as of right now that the car has bumper to bumper warranty, but it has made me realize that these issues may become very expensive once I have to pay for any inspections and repairs out of pocket. I cannot imagine the burden of paying $12,000 to replace an instrument panel. Or a lingering issue with the check engine light coming on once I have to start smogging this car per California law. You cannot smog test a car if you have a check engine light. So imagine have to take it in for service every time it goes off. In an exercise of honesty, I'm about to publish this video, but I'm still editing. So my mileage is 68 miles of 15,000 miles and the engine light is off. So as I said, in the last couple of months, it's been off and on back and forth. So uh, today is one of those days that it's off. But this sentiment is not exclusive of our GV70. I believe that most new cars have become overly complicated and expensive to repair because of all the electronic components and because of how intricate an engine bay is for normal repairs. You must remove so many things, covers, trims, and components to perform a normal thing like a water pump replacement. Honestly, lately I've been thinking about just not buying any more new cars and just opt for vintage reliable cars like the one I'm driving right now, which is my latest acquisition, my 2003 Lexus GS 300. This is a workhorse void of complexity in its components, easy to repair with parts that are easily accessible without major dismantling. My Lexus is also very comfortable and quiet, similar to what you expect from a new premium car nowadays. Sure, it doesn't have many of the modern features like driving modes, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, 360 cameras, blind spot monitor, and huge screens providing you with information nobody asked for. But as much as these features are convenient to have, they also add to the complexity of a modern vehicle, making it more expensive to repair when the time comes. Maybe from now on, leasing is the way to go for me with these modern vehicles because I just wouldn't like to be stuck with a car that is prone to expensive repairs. And I do understand that when you lease vehicles, you never own a title to a vehicle and it can get very expensive down the road. But just judging by my own car buying history, I know that I don't keep cars for too long and seems like this GV70 will not be an exception. My first experience with the Genesis brand has been similar to that of Audi and BMW with some issues here and there. Nothing major, but these first 15,000 miles don't paint a promising picture for me and I'm leaning towards not keeping this car long term. But again, just like I wouldn't keep any modern premium car for a long haul. We will continue to drive the GV70, although lately I've opted to drive this GS300 a lot more than the GV70. So in the last two months, two and a half months, I have put over 5,000 miles on this GS300 that should have gone to the GV70. In fact, right now I'm undergoing a road trip from California to Texas and back in about four days. So the total mileage for this trip is gonna be like 1,600 miles that should have gone to the other car. So I'm guessing that just in the way that we drive that other car, the rate at which we put miles on that one right now is 15,000 miles in about 10 months. It's gonna slow down a lot because it's, my wife drives, drives it like two miles each way to work. So I'm guessing that the miles are gonna start to slow down a lot. 15,000 in 10 months, probably for uh, the next 12 months, it's probably gonna be more like five or maybe 7,000 miles because a lot of the bulk miles are gonna go to this car. But don't worry, I'll keep updating you with my ownership experience. I still have services to do on that vehicle and all that. And I'll keep you posted about how much longer I decide to keep the GV70. Overall, our first 15,000 miles on this Genesis GV70 have been great, but not without issues. Our GV70 offers luxury with the value proposition, and the 2.5 turbo offers adequate performance for what it is, and I never felt that I should have gone for the 3.5. If you're in the market for a new SUV, I highly recommend you check out what Genesis has to offer. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if, if I've been too harsh in my assessment or if you have any questions about the GV70 or if there's anything else you would like to see on my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.